You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. This is the No Doubt About It podcast. No Doubt About It. And now your hosts, Christy and Mark Runcetti. I don't even know where to start. I know. I know. Uh, it's 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 been a it's been a week for the uh, the Ron Ketty family. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we won't bore you with all the challenges, but needless to say, there's a reason that Mark has a baseball hat on still today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even. Uh, my hair is the consistency of a horse's mane. <laughs> right now and that's not a positive it really it's really not it is yeah. a um it's it's a it's still a cold shower situation in the run Kenny household if we're lucky uh yeah. now we're discovering uh, we have workers still they're currently downstairs as we're talking yeah. uh we may not have any water let alone cold water yeah so we're still in a work of progress um yeah. I love dry shampoo. I should do a commercial for some great dry shampoo right now. We need oh. a dry a dry shampoo sponsor. So yeah. if you know of anybody, yeah. let us know. Oh no, totally. This is uh this is a rough deal. But uh um, anyway. Yeah. But- uh it, so we'll knock this uh, show off. This is gonna be a quick one. Uh, I say that. I always say that, but I you think you do, and this- then we just kinda we start chattering. Yeah. And then yeah. You but know- we'll, we'll try to be around 40 minutes, knock this thing out. There's some interesting stories yeah. that we want to talk about. Uh and then we'll have another guest coming up on Monday. But this one will just be the captain and myself, Captain and Tennille. <laughs> Tennille, thanks for joining me. Oh, too bad we can't play that song. We well, could do. A, that? We could do. A which cap- one was, What's their biggest hit? Oh God. Do that to me one more time. Once is never enough with a man like you. Do that to me one more time. I can never get enough of a man like you. The dude that knows this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Captain you know and random Teal. songs. And else, we gotta utilize camera. Too, I gotta a bit tell. More. I gotta tell a, a short little story here. Uh, I was talking to some of my friends, Jan and Deanna, yeah. today. Yeah. We were talking about music. Your love for '80s tunes, right? Are it relentless? Okay. Right. Usually, you... I was looking at an old video yesterday of a Guns and Roses 1989. Okay. Vintage Axl Rose sounded yeah. incredible. Well, it's good that he had a voice for about what two and a half years before he just started by screaming. But if you hear it now, it's rough. Uh, yeah, well, it's yeah. been a long time. I know. Right? I don't blame him. I, it, I mean, I used he, to be able to sing back in the day too, but nobody's asking me to sing a solo these days. So. Well, that's a good point <laughs> for a variety of other reasons. <laughs> it's true. Good <laughs> but, point. No, I was talking to uh, Janet. You know, we go on these walks, and we were chatting about how you are this. King of one hit wonders from the eighties. Okay, you can re- right, name like a Vodka Seagulls, guys like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm random, with you. random yeah. one. one uh-huh. Yeah. I'm yeah. with you. Okay, yeah. all that. And I was explaining, we got into talking about your campaign and how every campaign has a song. Okay. Right. And how we had this big round table discussion with your team and everybody was throwing out songs for you to have it be your song, right? right. To be like the campaign song. So like when you would go out to an event, it would play the song. When you go up on stage, sure. you'd play the song for people who don't know what that means. Sure. And most, um, you know, there's a lot of country tunes out there that a lot of <laughs> national Republicans use. I know they do. It's and, craziness. you know, it, anyway, so we were going around the table and a lot of people were throwing a lot of 80s songs out. Mm. I of the Tiger, I think. Rocky yeah. was thrown out, blah, blah, blah. Mark went with uh, Power of Love by, by Huey Harry, Lewis. Huey Lewis. Yeah. And everybody thought you were nuts. I remember at the table, like, yeah. Jay, Enrique, everybody was like, Jess, she was like, everybody's looking at you like, yeah. have you lost your mind? Right. Like, why would you pick a hair, uh, Power of Love? Right. And then you're like, just play it. Just play it, everybody. Yeah. Power of Love is a curious thing. Make a one man weep, make another man sing. You play it and you're like bouncing your head. Like, yeah. You're fired up. And we end up using it. Yeah. And it actually was a great song. Now oh. it actually makes me so sad because when I hear it, I'm like, yeah. oh, man. It is a great song. It will forever remind me of the campaign. But just talking about just 80s. Yeah. 80s songs, it's your thing. So the fact that you don't know what Captain and Tim sing. Yeah. I don't, they're 70s, really, I think. That's the oh. problem. Is they're just a little before okay. our time. But right. but I, uh, but yeah, no, I, I knew right out because the, the start of Power Love is so good. It's like, yeah. bah, bah, and you're just yeah. like, come on. How can you not love it? And and so, and then, you it know, come on, Back like, to the Future. 
Yeah, that's we what I was saying. Kids. Marty McFly on his, on his skateboard. That's yeah. what I mean. that, that little sound, that oh. little thing. The other thing that they asked me to talk about really fast was I never told anybody what your ringtone was. And apparently oh. early in the, in the podcast, his phone went off. Mark's phone went off. Yeah. And I was always, I was having people guess. Well, people guessed Rocky, Eye of the Tiger. You can call it right now. And people were guessing right. all kinds of things. And, and they're like, you never told us what it was. So they were asking me, what, yeah. what is it? Yeah. So I will call you, can you call really it. fast yeah. and then we'll play it for you really right. quickly. See if you recognize it. Yeah, see if you recognize it. And this it. is one of my favorite, favorite shows okay. of all time. Bring my mic up just to shade else just for a second. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So I, I do you recognize it? And of course it is Dallas. It's the theme to the show. Yeah. Dallas. Yes. So for all those people that were dying yeah. to know, and yeah. I do want to thank you guys. A lot of you guys wrote in. I'm sorry we got sidetracked with other like Q and A's with people. My apologies on that, but yeah, it's the Dallas theme. I something I figured nobody else would ever guess. Yeah. So no, no winners I, I, on that. It one, was but. such a great show when I was growing up as a kid. It was um, Dukes of Hazard. Oh, I know. Dallas. Right. Falcon Crest. Well, don't forget, like, oh, Love Boat was Saturday night. Yeah, no, yeah, no. This was yeah, Friday yeah. night. Friday night, yeah. Yeah, and the, the most, I'll never forget growing up uh, as a kid, the most uncomfortable moment you ever had was when you'd be, you know, you'd be watching Dallas or Falcon Crest, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, like, JR would end up, you know, in the sack with another chick, right? <laughs> and you're there with your parents, and you're looking around like, I need this scene to end, so J, you know, let's cut from JR to Miss Ellie or something, so that I, so that my parents and I aren't sitting in the same room staring at JR bagging a chick. And so it was <laughs> oh always, God. no, it was always like one of those things. It was nothing worse than when you're a kid, <laughs> and there's a scene that's a little bit uh, spicy. Okay, well, I must have been clueless. I'm this. I'm actually older than you, technically. I you're not technically older. You're older okay, than me in whatever, years. Whatever. <laughs> okay. I also uh, grew up watching Dallas with my mom on Friday nights. It was actually a really fun, super fun Friday night. My mom would come off. You know, she was working a lot. She'd make us shakes. And then we were so excited to watch Dallas. I was not allowed to watch Falcon Crest. She was oh, like, yeah. peace out. Get out of here, oh, no. little Falcon. one. Oh, no. Yeah. But I can say I never was like, oh, my gosh, it's too risque. I better get out of here. Like, that didn't even enter my mind. I was probably just oblivious to what was going on. No, because when but I or, you know, it's real frightening when you think about it. We were like seven, eight, nine, and we were sucked into the soap opera. I know. I also watched Days of Our Lives when oh, I was that's, like see, that's seven a, years old. Yeah, you are. You're deeply scarred. We also got some fun comments yeah. that came in I wanted to share based on, um, you know, a really he heavy he episode we had last time. Yeah, with and it, by the way, hair. huge response to that, which we do appreciate. We appreciate the the, the donations to Officer Hair and, and the prayers for him and his, his family, his girlfriend, his kids. Uh, just a heartbreaking story. Yeah, still yeah. really sad. And so this yeah. first one, um, and I didn't, um, so the first one here I have um, from Rhonda mm -hmm. Willett, prayers for Officer Hare's family and the first responder in South Carolina, immensely grateful for the efforts of the gas station attendant, Drew. Absolutely. And law enforcement who captured this animal. Um, absolutely, for without question on that one. And then Mar uh, Marion Ray said another excellent podcast. Jeremy Vaughn was so good. We're sending up prayers for Justin Harris family. So sad. Um, and we've gotten a lot of positive response. We appreciate that. If you guys want to write in, or if you have questions or things you want to talk about, you can uh, put it on our YouTube comments. I read, I try to read those all the time if I can, or at least after every show. And then, or our email info at no doubt about it podcast.com is another way you can do that. And yeah. please keep hitting that subscribe button. We are no. climbing up and we're trying to get to our, we have a new record and we would love to see us get to that record because again, it's something that will really help us kind of kick us over the edge to get more guests in here to hear to, so, something to share with you guys. So yeah. anyway, thanks again for all of that. So let's dive in. Okay. Yeah. I want to start with this story. And I don't know how many of you have seen this. It's the, um, well, first, I first saw it with libs of TikTok. Um, it is the Planet Fitness yeah, this is debacle terrible. that has developed here. So last week, uh, this tweet came out from Libs of TikTok. A woman at a Planet Fitness claims she went into the bathroom and a man was in there shaving while she went in there. Why does Planet Fitness allow men to do this? And he starts saying, this, did this really happen? Well, you see her picture. And mm -hmm. this is just a dude shaving. I, I mean, this is just a guy who looks over at her and is like, yeah, what are you looking at? You know, like yeah. he's just shaving. Is, is and what... there is a 12-year-old girl in the locker room. That's that, right. That you don't see in that picture. But there's a 12-year-old girl in a towel, horrified, in the corner of that locker room. Okay. And so so then she she comes out, walks out. 
and, and she's she's in Alaska. She looks like a little bit if you're really comparing her to someone, she looks a little bit like a younger version of Roseanne Barr. So she comes out and she starts describing what happened here. So we want to let her describe how this all went down and how this has played out in the week since. So here's the woman who went in there and actually took the picture. Fairbanks, Alaska, day two of Planet Fitness Saga. I came in Monday, there's a man in the women's locker room shaving. A little girl sitting in the corner, she could have been 12 years old. I don't know how old she was. In a towel, kind of freaked out that there's a man shaving in her locker room. Well, I was offended. I took a picture of him and I asked him, why are you there? You're a man with a penis. Why are you in the women's locker room? And he justified by saying, I'm queer LGB. And I said, you shouldn't be in the women's locker room. Well, I left. And um, as I said this morning, I got canceled. Planet Fitness is defending the man in the women's locker room, the man with the penis, rather than the child sitting in the corner with a towel wrapped around her. So people, I just want you to know, this is weird, it's not good, uh, it, it's it's rather disturbing. So Okay. Yeah, and what's disturbing is how Planet Fitness responded to this. Okay. Instead of acting, I don't know, like in protection of all members, including your 12-year-old girl and all women that use that locker room. No, that's not what they did. Instead, their statement says the member who posted on social media media violated our mobile device policy that prohibits taking photos of individuals in the locker room, which resulted in their membership being terminated. So, yeah, you know, heaven forbid this woman take a picture of this guy in the locker room. Well, uh, and they also because said she it, violated her membership agreement by doing that. But the guy that goes in there, that's a full on man. Apparently, it's fine. He's not he's not violating anybody. Right. So she gets bounced. Right. right. OK. And, and their policy at Planet Fitness is whatever sex you say you want to be, you can you go into wherever it. you want You can go where you want. Yeah. You can just go wherever you want, which is incredibly dangerous for women. OK. And so oh, what, it's what not is keeping women's safe spaces whatsoever for any woman, whether you're 12 years old or older, like unbelievably ridiculous and he's not done he's not done in fact there was another picture taken of him earlier or really late last week and here he is here getting dressed again yeah he's got his pantyhose on this so he does he's, he's going... wearing pantyhose so i guess you can be in a women's locker room if right. you're wearing pantyhose i mean yeah i didn't realize that was the line I guess, so just, yeah, so throw, just throw on some hose. pantyhose yeah maybe a bra here and there I and mean, you're good to go you're shaving your face because you're a guy Okay. And you're in a women's locker room. Right, well, I'm laughing yeah. about it because it's comical. It's ridiculous. Well, you know, it's strange when you have to stop your day as as a woman and shave midway through because you got the five o'clock shadow. Yeah, no woman I know has to shave her face for a five o'clock <laughs> shadow. Give me a break. This okay. is ridiculous. So, so then, okay. So it's so it starts to turn into a different direction here. Uh, uh, El Eclipse 6. So this is from, I think this is from Yahoo!, in, in the article says, give Planet Fitness the Bud Light treatment. Calls grow to boycott the gym after a string of sexual abuse for men and women's bathrooms incidents. OK, so here's here's a quote. Now, this is what's interesting about this. OK, so they go through what's happening right now and, and what's happening with Planet Fitness. And they're, they're they are getting the Bud Light treatment. If you start looking at their stock and a bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that. But but the quote. That, that comes from this story goes back to 2023, which is interesting. It says a biological male was arrested after exposing himself to a 15-year-old in a Planet Fitness women's locker room. The male who was arrested allegedly approached the minor in a Planet Fitness restroom while she was showering, pulled back the curtain while he was standing there completely exposed, then harassed her until she left. It's unclear whether the incident was connected to the Planet Fitness policy or the perpetrator's gender identity. They are going to get sued multiple times if they continue down this road. As they should. A agreed. Absolutely. If any man was in our our, our membership at our at our gym yeah. and pulled back a shower curtain on our girl, I would I I wouldn't sue him. I'd freaking kill him if he was in that room. I'd come out of that shower. I don't care if I had any clothes on or not, and I would I would strangle that guy. No, there's no doubt. I mean, he'd be you'd be coming. He'd out be of lucky it. to get no, out of there without just, me just freaking ripping his eyes out. I mean, there's no business a man has zero business up in a female shower. I could not agree more. In in, in Planet Fitness is so how off is on how they're dealing with this at this point. How that is not assault. That's assault. That's classified as assault. 
Well, in that particular case, absolutely. And, and then, it, but still, even the way Planet Fitness is going about this right now and, and being so tone deaf in, in basically taking women and brushing them aside, it, you know, there's a line in which I understand as a company, you have to be sensitive of certain things. There's no doubt. This is completely the wrong step. And because it's the wrong step, look at the result in their stock price too, because mm -hmm. that's all these guys pay attention to. That's the only thing they're going to start to pay attention to here. Look is. at what has happened over the past week to the Planet Fitness fitness stock price here. It's gone down over the past week, the better part of at least $10 a share. Yeah. About 7% is what, yeah. I'm, is what I'm seeing on libs of TikTok. Yeah. And so it's down to $55 and 61 cents. And, and I say that not because that money matters as much as people's comfort matters. And what we've seen more now and and the total numbers are their stock is not only down 7%, as you mentioned, the boycott Planet Fitness is trending on next, mass membership cancellations, and they've got major issues at corporate. And this is just what makes this so stupid. It's like, what are you doing? Why in the world are you choosing to allow somebody to absolutely destroy your customer base? Because that's what you're doing. So if someone just walks in and says, this is who I am, it's my truth. I don't care what you think your truth is. There are certain realities that if we don't stand up, not only as companies, but as people in this country and just say, look, your rights as somebody that, that wants to walk down whatever you, road you want, do not usurp everybody else's. And that's what channel, uh, channel, channel fitness Chan is what they're doing. Or yeah. planet fitness. Planet fitness. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, no, no, it's true because it's, it's, it, you know, it's an interesting little thing here. So I was talking to my friend um, today and she found out her daughter's pregnant. Okay. This is kind of, this is new since we had babies, what they're doing now. So she can actually get a, like when we, when I was pregnant, I had to wait, I think till about 17 weeks if I wanted to find out the gender through an ultrasound. Okay. We chose not to find out. Um, we, we chose to make it a surprise. Mark that they were boys. They turned out to be girls, whatever. Anyway, right, let's move on. Any, <laughs> we won't rehash that again. Uh, blue nursery, only blue clothes, but whatever. We love our daughters. They survived. <laughs> but this is what was fascinating to me. Now her daughter is only 10 weeks pregnant. Yeah. She can have a blood test, a mom blood test, yeah. okay, just out of her own blood. And it tells you the gender of her baby. Genitals are not formed yet. And no that blood way. will tell you if it's a male or female baby. Wow. So I'm sorry, you can have any argument you want, but your gender yeah. is predecided at such an early stage in pregnancy that it's like, we don't know what gender we are. I mean, I just, the gender confusion, I just, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of digressing, but I'm just, it, the fact that you're, the way that God designed us as humans is you are defined what your gender is before your before your genitals are even developed. Stop saying genitals, you're killing <laughs> okay, me. Okay, I'm sorry, but um, that's sorry. <laughs> that, well, that is the no. Name I, of I it. agree so with you're you. Uncomfortable. I, no, I agree. I agree with you. But but here's the thing: for people that are adults that want to walk down a different path, you know what? That's your business, right? But it is not your business to walk into a locker room and make other women incredibly uncomfortable or girls or girls. Absolutely, this is that's, horrendous. That's just it's, and I'm sorry, but it's got to be less than a, a per percent of the members of planet fitness who oh, are men ridiculous. who want to wear pantyhose and go shave in a women's locker room. I'm sorry. I, I bet if you did the survey, it'd be no, a pretty low so, What number. I don't get about this, this is so simple. If you run planet fitness, what you say is if someone is not going to go into the bathroom in which they are the sex, they were born, they can go into a separate bathroom, single locking, single person bathroom. Every single gym has one, yeah. by the way. And you can go into that one. And, and if fact, you don't like it, pound sand. And in fact, at our gym, when our girls, because our girls have gone to our gym since they were really little, they went to the daycare program. I was not even allowed to bring them into the women's locker room until they hit a certain age point. Yeah. That they say, you have to use a family bathroom. You are not allowed to bring your young children in out of respect for women that, you know, at a certain age. Yeah. And I just think that was the line they try. Can you, I didn't break that rule. I'm like, I could respect that rule enough. Yeah, it's, it, it is. It's, it, it is watching these companies drive their businesses off a cliff because they're so scared of, of not making the right choice and, and not, you know, pushing someone else's issues on everyone else. It's just ridiculous. You have your, if you, again, just like you just said, any adult can do whatever they want. That's their freedom. It absolutely is. But they impending it and putting it on everybody else to be a part of it, not even just to, to agree or not agree with it, but to be a part of it. When you walk into a female bathroom, when there's children in there or women in there that are dressing, you are asking other people to be a part of that. 
without their permission. Well, and, and just again, look, look at this guy getting dressed in the bathroom. I mean, I mean, you can see this in, you can see him either shaving or putting on his panty. It's just ludicrous. So, you know, just do the eye test, do the eye test. If it looks bonkers, don't do it. Right. How about that? I mean, look, I'll, I'll be the marketing guy for, for planet fitness. If you literally look at this and you're like, this is crazy. I can't believe this. Then don't do it. Stop making women uncomfortable. Stop trying to force whatever this guy's doing on everybody else. He can go to a one-off bathroom. It won't hurt him. It won't matter. Okay. It and will no not matter. Offense, no offense out there or maybe offense. I don't know at this point. No woman, no kid, no woman, no woman ever wants to see a man, a grown man put on pantyhose. I don't care what's well, going on. I mean, nobody wants to see that. Plus that top and that skirt. They don't, they just don't work. <laughs> and all if right. you're going to be the marketing director for Planet Fitness, can we talk about that bright purple that they have all over their walls? That's adjustment free zone. Well, in an offshoot of this issue, the trans surgery issue, it's tipping the scales kind of in a different way in the UK. So Schellenberger, you brought him up before. Michael Schellenberger. Yeah, yeah. you've talked about him before. Yeah. Well, now he's he is talking about Times of London, a very respected newspaper organization, right. and they're basically calling out that all these this gender affirming care, um, puberty blockers, surgeries as being completely off the rails, and that they need to shut this down. Okay, and, and he he started this with a tweet, and he said, "Gender medicine looked like the future." Now the Times of London, one of the most respected newspapers in the world, calls it quack medicine and is urging that it be reined in entirely. U.S. media, medical associations, and politicians should follow the U.K.'s lead. And so here is the headline from the Times of London, and there it is. It's quack medicine is what they say. And it was really interesting. The pull quote from this story was really, really interesting. Um from Janice Turner, who wrote it. Yeah, she said, One day we'll look back on the era of puberty blockers with horror. This shocking chapter in medical history where the ideological objectives of trans rights campaigners trumped the welfare of disturbed children is coming to an end worldwide. And we can only hope that it's coming to an end worldwide. Well, in, in one of the things that I think that we've, we've noticed, and, and one thing with this that is so disheartening and is, if, especially if you live in this world, is infuriating. When you look at the type of child that ends up really in these spots, it is often a, a girl who has autism and may well be gay and then thinks they're in the wrong body. Right. And they're just trying to find their way through. And is a world that we're pretty familiar with, you can understand where they get confused and they need support. They don't need surgery and they don't need puberty blockers and they're 11 and 12 years old, but far too often that's happening and it is disgusting. And if we don't stand up now for these kids, it really worries me because sometimes you have parents leading the charge with these kids and they're the ones who are pushing their kids toward these things when they're not old enough to understand it. And I think finally we're starting to get a grip on this to be able to say this has to stop. These kids deserve better and they deserve adults that will protect them. That's right. And and just for those folks that are out there that maybe they don't have an autistic kid or they don't work with children that have autism. A very normal feeling for a child with autism is they don't feel like the kids around them. So when they express themselves, they'll say, I don't feel like I fit in. I don't feel like everybody else. I don't feel like my peer group. I don't feel like a girl. I don't feel like they don't, they, you know, they usually don't have a lot of um, emotional connection, which is what they feel like the female peer group is about. And they don't necessarily jive with the boys as much. And sometimes they, it's this middle ground of just trying to figure themselves out. Plus they're 11 and 12. So their brain is still developing. There's all these facets that go into it. And to jump in and assume it's a sexuality issue or a gender ideology situation when it's just the way their brains are developing and give them the space and the time and the support emotionally to support these kids. I'm incredibly passionate about this, clearly. We have a lot of reasons for this, but it is something that I think is a great big misunderstanding, and I don't think educators know enough about it, and so they shouldn't be shelling out their advice on what these kids should be doing. No, I and have they, no idea. And, and parents need to educate themselves, too. There's yeah. so many kids on Spectrum now. There's more kids on Spectrum than, than have ever been in the past, and these kids on Spectrum are greatly impacted by this. They are the what, the biggest group that are part of this trans uh, movement, really, yeah. that they're just not feeling like they fit in. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So no, it's it, no, heated. no. It, it, it makes sense, and it, those two issues tie together. It's I think we're seeing as a country we're 
we're starting to, I think, pivot more in the right direction. That that, that people so. across the board are saying, wait a minute, this is not good stuff. Now you still have people that that I don't I don't there's a special place in, in hell for people who who go and push kids to get surgeries right. at a really young age. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm there's sorry, no other no. way to say it. I, I mean, I, I just, our 16 year old changes her mind ever with the wind on things that she thinks and wants to be and things that, you know, it's just, it's normal. I'm sorry. Yeah, and younger it's than normal. that. It's crazy. So it's so yeah. normal. Okay. I got to bring this one up because yeah. I thought this one was crazy. Yeah. Okay. A political consul- consultant is being sued. Okay. Okay. Now, he was part of the uh, presidential candidate for Dean Phillips. He worked for, he was hired by Dean Campaign, Phillips. Campaign, yeah. yeah. Okay. He was hired, Dean Phillips is running against Joe Biden. They had the New, New Hampshire primary. This guy, the, this operative that was hired, I only look up his name, again, Steve Kramer. Okay. okay. Steve Kramer was hired. And what he did is he worked with an AI development. He paid $150 okay. to have big, big money. a lot of money Okay. to make a, fake robo call that sounded like joe biden was not joe biden okay. sounded like joe biden telling voters to stay at home don't vote for the primary <laughs> save your vote for election yeah, day you don't want to use it up yeah he said don't use your vote for the primary save yeah, it up come save to the up. general election because yeah, it counts for two right. in the general right but <laughs> this sounded enough like joe biden that he's getting sued. This the the consultant yeah. is getting. Is I getting bet he sued. is. Did Dean Phillips know about this? He says he has no idea. He didn't okay. know about it. He gave this guy two hundred fifty thousand dollars to help run his campaign. Which okay, which you know, he used one hundred and fifty dollars of to do this. <laughs> well, that's what it says. The report says. Okay. Anyway, you get a call and it sounds like Joe Biden telling you to either save your vote or go vote or don't vote or whatever. Well, we under yeah okay. I mean, we're entering this new weird fake. Uh, face like right. be careful what you what like videos you're watching on instagram half of those we don't know if they're true or not yeah um and a lot of them are not true by the way and then now i guess we're going to be hacked by uh political people saying that they're uh, hello i'm trump I, I think it is a real maybe issue maybe we could hire out ava because she has a pretty good trump imper- impersonation yeah, does, yeah. I, I think people might know it's it's her uh, yeah but still ava sounds like um i think she sounds a little bit like a comedian doing trump yeah, so she's Ava, like imitating it. Yeah, 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 she's like right, imitating it, right. which is which is the I mean, highest when, form when of flattery. You're, when you're 16 and you yeah, can no, it's good. A, a it's good. Well, up, it, it, it isn't just in the political world, but by the way, that's especially a concern because remember, it sways w- elections. It could. Well, I mean, it could, right? So, so there is that issue that could there be something that a deep fake that happens leading up to the election where people believe it's true. And then it turns out not to be true. But by the time people figure it out, it's already too late. Te- well, I mean, I'm sorry. Deal. I get texts right now and I'm like, oh, it says I'm going to get FedEx delivery. I didn't order anything from FedEx. Right. My teenage daughters have to be the one that says, mom, come on, don't fall for that. Yeah. It's a scam. Yeah. So and I think I'm pretty savvy, but even I get I'm getting fooled on stuff that's online and things that are coming into my phone. It, so I can't imagine people that sometimes get scammed in phone calls and they think, hey, the real Joe Biden's calling me right now. Yeah, he's here he a comes. Message. Here comes Joe. Here comes Joe. He's, uh, he's sending me a personal message. Of course he, must he is. Really care about oh, my yeah. vote. You so. know he does. It, anyway. But it isn't just politics either. Now Apple has reached out and and they've done this story. You're going to see here. We're going to do is an Apple rep quote rep calling, which is not a real person. It's an AI. Right. And they're calling a guy trying to get them to buy the new Vision Pros. The new Apple Vision Pros are like 3K, right? They're like $3,000. I mean, they're pretty cool. They're like really, they're very overpriced for what they are, but they're cool. And um, the only problem with them, though, is that recently people have just been thinking it's cool to drive with them on or, you know. So what do they do? Is it like like the fake glasses? It's VR. So it's basically like your phone. Oh, it's just VR. It's your phone. On oh, and you so you can text, you can watch movies, you can have with photos. your eyes. Is you text with your eyes or no? I mean, it sensors like it has sensors how all you, over well, it. Well, I don't understand. So like, it, how does this work? It, can, it, it basically has cameras everywhere, so it can see your hands moving. So it'll see what you're clicking. Oh. It's all transparent though. You can see the outside world, but it's like your phone screen is right in front of the outside. Okay. World. So people wear them around. People ride bikes. People drive cars with them. Oh, on. it sounds really safe. Okay, not so safe. all right, so texting, let's do this. Let's texting listen. Texting was already bad let's, enough. Yeah, well, that's true. But let, let's look at or listen to this phone call and, and watch how or listen how this guy, this AI cat from Apple, talks this guy right into buying these things. Okay, it's absolutely amazing. Listen to this. Hey, James. I'm not interested, man. <laughs> yeah. No worries. I hate calls out of the blue, too. But I'm actually from Apple, 
and I saw you were checking out Vision Pro and were about to pre-order but left the page. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I was curious, what had now. you looking into potentially? Okay, I can respect that. Can I just ask one question before you go? Uh, fine, shoot, what's up? Why did you, well, why did you decide not to pre-order the Vision Pros? I saw you changed your mind last minute. Um, cause they are crazy expensive. <laughs> I'm going to get the meta quest instead. I get it. But you saw what happened to threads, right? <laughs> Do you think the meta quest will end up being a better product than the vision pros or is it just the price? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's mainly about price. I'm sure the vision pros are going to be better, but I'm not spending $3,000 on a pair of goggles, my man. Oh yes, you are. Hold on a second. I feel that for sure. Oh, I definitely feel want you to make the best decision yeah, for sure. you. Everybody can says I, offer I a different feel like that for sure. Uh, I guess so. What's up? Okay. So something that not a lot of people are aware of. If you take the route of using financing, Vision Pros only come out to a few hundred dollars a month. So although $3,000 sounds like a lot, we can break it up to be more affordable for you. Does that by chance sound more palatable? Interesting. How would that work? Yeah, totally. Happy to give you context. Basically, you just fill out your details real fast and can see if you get approved. And if you are approved, it's much more affordable for you. Uh, okay. So what do we got to do for that? Awesome. Okay. I'll send it over now. Let me know when you receive it. Uh, okay. I just got a text. That was, that was quick. Okay, sweet. Just fill that form out. Like I said, it takes 45 seconds. And once you are done, you'll have your name down for a pre-order of the Vision Pros. Can I help you with anything else? Um, no, that's okay. That's awesome. no, you okay. already suckered me into uh, so, buying this Vision Pro that I didn't want to begin with. Well, so thank it you. It is amazing that that AI guy comes up with. Have you heard of something called? Not a lot of people know this. Financing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all heard of that. Yeah. This poor kid walks right into it, right? But there are some little interesting little tells in there that you listen to him. He goes, yeah, sweet. And, you know, yeah. the little or stuff ha -ha. like that. It's getting, yeah. The it's, laugh. Ha ha. It's getting better and better and better. Yeah, well, it, my understanding of this, because um, Ava's the one that actually brought us the story. Yeah. She said that um, it will start to mimic you. It will mimic your pace, your rhythm. Like, if you're saying a lot of funny things, it will lighten up the con the way it's talking. But really, most AI stuff, at least up until this point, doesn't talk like a, a person. Like they say weird things that people would never right, actually say. Right, so there's right. usually telltales, like even when you pull up AI written stuff. Oh, there's like, no doubt. Like, I saw one the other like today. That. Nobody yeah. says that. Right. Yeah. And so they're usually easier to spot, but they're it's getting trickier. Yeah. And I just think people have to be more and more aware because what if they're calling you and saying, hey, listen, you have, you know, you, you have something wrong with your house or we've discovered this or we need your social security number because we have to shut this thing down right now or whatever. I mean, yeah. if they sound legit, be careful. Yeah, like, no, it's true. It's 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 changing things. There's no doubt. All right. Uh, Florida is the place where good policy tends to come from. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Uh, Ronnie D. Because it's not California or New Mexico, right? Well, so uh, people uh, actually pass good policy there, right? Well, well, yeah, our guy, Ronnie D., got another one here. So okay. take a look at this headline. Florida homeless to be banned from sleeping in public spaces under the DeSantis-backed law. Now, there's a few details on the new law. Ella, we'll go to clip 17. It says, Florida homeless will be banned from sleeping on sidewalks and in parks and in other public spaces under a law signed Wednesday by Ron DeSantis. It promises homeless greater access to services. And this is the key, okay? The key is you cannot have people sleeping on the streets. You just can't do it. But at the same time, you've got to be able to expand those services so that people that do want the services and do want help can get that help. But that's something we need to do in the state of New Mexico. And Desperately. that is- if you've watched Albuquerque over the past five years, you've seen the homeless problem explode because it's anything goes. The mayor says it and the governor allows it to. And that has to change. So you have to pass a law that says you cannot sleep on the streets. And then you have to expand coverage and care for people who want it. And so you got to be able to give people help who need it. And then you got to get them off the streets. And that's exactly what they're doing. And what was interesting is. They went and put out a document comparing the homeless issue in Florida. Well, they just passed this law to California. And some of the numbers here, as they take a swipe at what's going on in California, are unbelievable. Here it is. And we can make this a little bit bigger. 
So we can take a little look at it here. And it talks about a few different things here. So even as the third most populous state in the nation, Florida has no cities in the top 10 of the nation's homeless population. And while Florida's total population has increased, the state has experienced one of the largest decreases in homelessness since 2019. So this can be dealt with. Okay, can be dealt with. You mean there's actually solutions? It turns out there are. Yeah. And if you're, if and you're, let me clarify really fast. When you make a policy that says taking people off the streets, it doesn't mean you can just put them in random parks either. No. It means you have to get them into a facility or a place where they can actually be housed. Yeah. And they are. And so, but then you see the the other comparison is what has California done? And so, look at the bottom here. Six out of the ten cities with the largest homeless populations are in California. According to HUD, the California homelessness rate is up to 15%. And again, what you permit and what you encourage is what you will get. And California is a great example of that. California has 11.9% of the U.S. population, but 30% of the homeless population. It is so incredibly clear what needs to be done here. And that is a compassionate setup which absolutely treats people, but does not allow them to sleep on the streets. You can see how it's destroyed California. And anybody who thinks Gavin Newsom would be a good president because he would bring what he's done in California to the U.S. I mean, that Watch is a out. massive issue. Watch out. I mean, it's just it's it's in the simplest form. It's a it's a form of discipline. You have to discipline your own children when they're young and, and make rules and regulations that they may not like in order to raise them efficiently. This situation is we have to put disciplines in place. I'm sorry you can't sleep on the street. I'm sorry you can't sleep in the park. I'm sorry you can't just do drugs and beg for money wherever you want. There are certain rules to a citizen to, to being a citizen in this town, in this village, or wherever you're living, the city. It's a social compact we right? all have with each other. And we have to have it. We start with our children when they're really young. The fact that we've just thrown this out the window as adults, I don't understand it. It's wrecking, it's wrecking cities, it's wrecking whole states. And it has to stop. You you don't put your foot down. You don't have a discipline against it. It's going to continue to happen. Yeah. No. Agreed. And so we'll see how this plays out in Florida. Yeah. But it is it's a good to see. Him it's even a different start. world yeah. in Florida than it is in California. And there's no way to compare Florida and California and say, oh my gosh, California is doing it right. Florida is blowing it. There's no way to yeah, say that. None. If you've been to L.A. and you go down to the Sunset Strip now. It's heartbreaking to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just been taken over. And so really what you're telling people is, especially people who live on the street, that ends one of two ways. Okay, you either get them help and they turn their life around or you leave them on the street, which is, quote, the compassionate thing to do, and you watch them die because mm -hmm. that's what happens. And that's not compassionate at all. And so it, it it is absolutely a clear, clear choice. Now, the next start, the next story. Okay. You, you've got this. I could not believe. Okay. okay. You explain this one. I don't understand this one as much. Yeah. It so, seems like it's such a brilliant plan that I don't understand it. Oh, it is brilliant. <laughs> okay. This is from uh, an article in Jacobin and it was written by Alyssa Corp. Okay. It says U.S. media is collapsing. Okay. No doubt about it. Yeah. There is no doubt about that. It's collapsing. And here is how you save it. Okay. Now this is, this is unbelievable. It says mass layoffs are tearing through U.S. media. To preserve a functioning media ecosystem, we need three things. Ready for this? Mm. Immediate aid to struggling journalists, meaning your taxpayer dollars go into the pocket of journalists. Public subsidies to smaller news outlets, meaning your taxpayer dollars go to small news outlets. And eventually an industry transformation into a publicly funded system, meaning the government props up news organizations. It's unbelievable. What this really calls for is a government takeover of news organizations. Okay, right out of Pravda, right out of Russia, right? This is craziness, okay? And your tax dollars should go to these struggling journalists. Here's a tip. If you're a young journalist and you want people to read your stuff, to watch your stuff, and to listen to your stuff, how about you put out good content which holds power accountable? But the minute that the vast majority of these weak-kneed journalists decided to amplify power, they lost their own voice. And now they want the government to force that voice back to them. And it's not going to happen. Had you actually done your job in the first place, you wouldn't be here. Right. You wouldn't be dying the way you are on the vine. So. So clearly, one of our ultimate fears is losing our memory. 
Alzheimer's. Yeah. It scares us to death. It scares us on personal levels with people that we know who are struggling with things of that nature. Obviously, like even joking around, like our memory is not as sharp as it once was. Yeah, yours definitely not. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I may have lost my Apple Watch yeah, and didn't yesterday. Know I, yesterday. Yes. And then I drove around at midnight looking for it. And it turns out, yeah, we found it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, my memory goes sometimes. But apparently there's some new, some new solutions out there. Yeah. So what they've looked at is they're looking at research that says Viagra could be good for your brain and could ward off Alzheimer's. In the numbers, they aren't insignificant here. They analyzed insurance claims for more than 7 million Americans. They found out that people who took sildenafil, I guess is what the active ingredient is, were 69% less likely to develop Alzheimer's than those who didn't, adjusting for sex, age, and other diseases. Correlation doesn't prove causation, but further studies suggested they might be onto something. In their new study, the Cleveland Clinic researchers analyzed two patient databases and found out that those who took sildenafil were 30% to 54% less likely to be diagnosed with Alzheimer's. They also found that sildenafil activates genes and neurons that are associated with cell growth, improved brain function, and reduced inflammation. So my question is, is this may sound like a dumb question, but I'm assuming that all these results in this testing have been done on men, right? Because it's not like a lot of women are taking Viagra, right? Can women take Viagra? I, I think you can. I don't know that for sure. So I'm not a yeah. doctor. I don't play one on TV nor yeah. on a podcast. But I feel like- Is I that heard... why you wore that shirt today? What? Because the, cause the, we're doing the blue pill and you're doing the- a Blue shirt? Yeah. Wow. No. I hear what you're saying. I have green no, eyes. No, I see so what I you're saying. blue and green clothes. Uh, but anyway. Okay. okay. Um, no, I just don't know. I'm like- if, so women are going to start taking pop and Viagra to help us with our memory? Yeah, I think it's possible. Are we going to have any other weirdo side effects? It, it, what I don't, yeah, right. So that's the thing I don't know is <laughs> like, if you I take, can you take a lower dosage? This is a PG uh, podcast. Can you we take a lower that. dosage of this thing that doesn't do that? And right. does it, will it help you? And so this is uh, at least I mean, promising. Listen, I, I, I would probably take anything to not have Alzheimer's. So I, I, I just think it's a very scary situation. And I don't mean to joke about it because it's there's a lot of people. No, that, a lot of good. Of, a lot of my friends have parents that are going through that right now. So it is the single biggest. I think it's the single biggest fear you have. In, oh, in, but absolutely. If, but if, hey, if this can get that job done, then here we know, go. we'll see. OK, right, last so one. getting a job done. Speaking of that, yeah, we have Buster. Okay. Yeah. Um, Buster is, uh, he's getting a job done. It's called, I want to stay in the pool. Yeah. This is our video of the day. Last story. You uh, need to see this video because it's yeah. so uplifting and we all could use a little dose of some humor. Yep. This dog is loving the family pool to such a degree that he's like a spoiled child and will not get out. He'll get out of the pool, but he loops back and keeps jumping in. So let's watch the Here's video. Buster. So if you're watching it, he jumps in, she gets him out, and as soon as she tries him off, boy. he jumps Four right back in the pool. Life. Here we go. Are you done? There he is. Are you Come done, here. Buster? Come oh. here. Oh, no, Buster. <laughs> Buster Henry. Buster. Oh. And we go back in. He's like on his, what, eighth time now? Come here. Come here. He jumps, he just <laughs> flies <laughs> in, too. And he's not like a tiny here. lab. He's no, he's huge. a big guy. He's a huge lab, and he just keeps, like, supermanning in, into the pool. Come here. And he's got a buddy that's doing it with him the whole time. And then she goes inside the house hey, and he's hey, still hey, doing it. Leave that vacuum cleaner alone. <laughs> then he jumps in again. And oh, then eventually are, you ready are great. Are you ready to come in? <laughs> these, these two have the best time. I, I, I think it's really cute. Actually. Yeah. And then dad comes home. And, and so the first lab comes right inside. And then Buster kind of goes and Buster looks about, he thinks, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm going to go back. And, and then he turns and he goes, okay, all right, dad. I'm I, out. It's I love over. that he listens to dad. Dad's like, yeah. dad's like the bad cop. Dad's like, get in here right yeah, now. Let's go Buster. Anyway, they're super cute. So if yep. you need something to lift you up, watch that video. Anyway, thanks so much for listening to us today. We appreciate your time and your support of our show. And we hope that you guys have a good rest of your week. Yes. And we are going to have a hot shower at some point and we will look better <laughs> next time you see us. Fingers crossed. All right. Okay. See you on Monday. You've been listening to the No Doubt About It podcast. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, rate, and review. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at No Doubt About It podcast. No Doubt About It. The No Doubt About It podcast is a Choose Adventure Media production. See you next time on No Doubt About It. There is no doubt about it.